Hello, my name is Mikhail Kalmogorov from UC San Diego. And in this video, I am excited to share with the audience of Long Green Club our most recent results. I will be talking about how to apply repeat graphs for long grid assembly. And I want to start from a brief history of the topic. Um, in Sengary sequence and error, overlap graphs appeared as a very uh, intuitive approach, and that is, if you have two rays that overlap, then you put an edge between the corresponding nodes in the graph. And this gave rise to a numerous number of assemblers, such as Celera or Kabog, and some of them are still being used in the present days. And later, in the second generation sequence and error, machines started to produce massively parallel reads. And it turned out that computing all versus all overlaps is very expensive. So the brain graph approach appeared as an alternative and um, gave rise to many new assemblers such as Velvet or um, Abyss or Spades. And now we are entering into the new long grid sequence and era. And it's already a few overlap layer consensus have been implemented. And the brain graph assemblers are somehow lagging. But in this work, we will attempt to fill this gap. And I will try to convince you that a good assembly is not just a set of contexts. But assembly graph also carries a lot of useful information. And just a few examples how the graph can be used. For example, it could be used for scaffolding or hybrid assembly. It could be used for segmented application analysis and analysis of the repeat content of your genome. It could be used for debugging your assembly. If you can visualize the graph, you should be able to tell where your assembly made a wrong decision and you can properly fix it. Uh, haplotyping. Alternative haplotypes induce a bubbles on the assembly graph, uh, which could be later used by the haplotyping software. And finally, assembly graphs answer the question why your assembly is not complete. Perhaps it is a long and result repeat or maybe it's a gap in coverage, but by looking at the graph, you should be able to tell what went wrong and plan additional finishing experiments. So as an example, here's an assembly graph of an yeast genome assembled from Oxford's nanopore reads. And black edges uh, correspond to the unique sequence and colored edges are under the repeats. So those black edges will be your context. And I wanted to highlight some other useful features of this graph, such as these two nodes correspond to uh, telomeres. They have either a high in degree or high out degree. There is a this node that corresponds to unresolved copies of Taiwan transposon that is abundant in this E strain. Those are separate complete chromosomes. And sometimes even the repeats are unresolved, they're not breached by reads. The order of the unique sequence is defined uh, through the graph structure. And this information can be used to fill the scaffold this unique sequence. So I hope I convinced you that uh, assembly graphs are useful. And ideally we would like to use deep brain graphs, but it is somewhat problematic for long reads because the brain graphs rely on exact camera matches and um, long reads have this high error rate, so it's simply not enough shared gamers. Instead, we uh, propose to use repeat graphs, uh, which intuitively is the brain graphs for approximate matches. We want, uh, given a genome, we want to collapse the repeats as shown in the slide and reveal the repeat structure. I will uh, give you a, an example how we can construct this graph from a complete genome, and then I will explain you how you can use this algorithm to actually assemble uh, reads. To build this graph from a complete genome, we will start from a pairwise representation of repeats, which could be visualized as local alignments on a dot plot. So in this example, you can see that there are a few repeats in the genome, which corresponds to the diagonals on this dot plot, and there is also a main diagonal that corresponds to the alignment of the genome to itself. What we'll do, we'll um, iterate through the endpoints of the alignment, and for each endpoint, we'll project it on the main diagonal, like shown in this figure, based on its x and y coordinates. 
and we will continue with the uh, other endpoints and also we will cluster the projections that are close to each other on the diagonal and also the endpoints that originated from the same alignment end will share the color like this all these uh, new created points are blue and we will continue this process and after we are done with all projections the main diagonal will contain the um, the nodes, the endpoint clusters, and the sequence between them. So, and all we have uh, to do is basically to glue the nodes that share the same color, and we will result into a graph that looks like this. And then we will need to glue the parallel edges that share the same sequence. And this is the, uh, our final repeat graph. And this is how we can build this graph from a complete genome. Now the question is, how can we apply it for read assembly? How can we generate repeat graphs from reads? First, let's assume that we somehow magically have this perfect repeat graph that corresponds to the given genome. So the reads actually will be uh, subpaths on this graph because the genome goes through the graph and read is a subset of the genome. And what we can do, we can take one read and switch to any other read that shares a sufficient overlap with the current one. And we can continue this process, and this will basically correspond to a walk at the graph. And perhaps we should stop when we hit a sequence that already have been assembled. This will correspond to something that we call a disjointed, with essential random walk on the uh, repeat graph. And um, it turned out that we can generate this set of the joint six really, really fast because we do not attempt to resolve repeats at this point. They might be misassembled, but it turns out that if you apply a repeat graph construction algorithm on the set of these joint ticks, you will result in the same repeat graph as it had been constructed from a complete genome. And intuitively, it is because the misassemblies that could have happened in these joint ticks uh, are result of incorrect resolved repeats. But these repeats will be collapsed back on the uh, repeat graph, so we uh, will be able to resolve these repeats correctly later. And after the graph is constructed, we apply conventional graph simplification procedures such as resolution of repeats using bridging reads, like shown in this picture. And we also have additional algorithm called Trestle that attempts to resolve unbridged repeats based on the heterogeneous between the repeat copies. So here's an example of a typical bacterial uh, repeat graph after it has been constructed. And as you can see, there uh, are a few repeats of multiplicity 2, there's a repeat of multiplicity 3, and there's even a repeat of multiplicity 5. And here's how this graph looks after repeat resolution. So most of the repeats have been resolved, and those that are left are simply very long, of length 35, 36, uh, thousand base pairs. And this is basically a result of your assembly, and the black edges will be output as context. So all these algorithms were implemented into a fly assembler, and the name of the tool is basically a tribute to French mathematician Camille Fly Saint Marie, who was actually the first to prove the existence of what we now know as deep learning sequences for the alphabet of size two, and this was later acknowledged by De Bruyne himself. And finally, um, I want to give you some results that we were able to get with Fly, and I will also compare Fly to other state-of-the-art assemblers using uh, Quast. And we'll measure contiguity in two metrics, two flavors. So the conventional NG50 and also NGA50, which is basically a similar metric but computed for the alignment of the context against the reference instead of the whole context. And intuitively, NGA50 could be viewed as a lower bound of the contiguity because sometimes it uh, could be overly conservative. And then G50 is a higher bound because the uh, chimeric fusion of context could artificially inflate this metric. And so here's an example of C. elegance assembly from Pagbaya Reads. And as you can see, all assemblers resulted into a somewhat similar contiguity. Uh, Fly was a little bit better, 
but uh, for this genome we expect all assembly uh, to, to good because it's not very complex and um, as you can see here fly was also uh, pretty fast but Minyasma and WTDBG2 were the fastest uh, so we also wanted to uh, see how different assemblers reconstruct the repeat sequence because most of the studies actually focus on the unique parts so here we visualize the um, reference mini asthma and fly context against the pack by reads that we uh, view as a ground truth and here you can see that fly was actually fly actually reconstructed the most accurate representation of the tandem repeat and mini asthma and even reference had reduced number of copies and in the case of reference, this might be a sign of the differences between this target and reference strains. And this is one case, but we found um, other cases like this in C. elegans assembly. And I told you that um, Fly and Canu produce essentially similar, very similar sets of context, but here how the assembly graphs looks like. In case of Fly, many contexts actually end with uh, tips, and which is basically means that the information is missing. And on the other hand, fly graph is, uh, have much more connections that explain why uh, contact fermentation has happened. So this was an easy genome, but uh, here I want to present you some human assembly. So first, here's a human assembly from ultralong Oxford nanopore reads and which this data set was recently published in Nature Biotech. So it was very exciting, very long reads, um, with then 50 over 100 kilobases. And here you can see that Fly was actually able to get the most contiguous assembly. So NG50 is roughly 20 megabytes. And Fly, importantly, was also faster, uh, six times faster than Canu and 10 times faster than Masurka. WTBG was the fastest one here, but perhaps it uh, comes at the cost of, of reduced contiguity. And uh, I also want to know that uh, in this situation, um, nanopore assembly still require polishing with the luminaries, unless you have a hybrid assembly like Mazurka, then you will get a uh, good base pair, squirrel, base pair quality in the beginning. So this is a nanopore assembly, but I also want to give you some results of the PugBio assembly. So this is the newest PugBio CCS data. Uh, reads of very high quality, similar, very similar to Lumina, but they're still pretty long. So, and as you can see, we can get very uh, good contiguous assemblies with Fly, Canoe, and Falcon. And also the base quality measured in FRED values is pretty high uh, for, for third generation sequencing. And this is also confirmed with the high Busco scores. Um, and in this case, Fly was also faster than Canoe and Falcon, WT, not as fast as WTBG, but more contiguous, as you can see. So you can assemble both uh, PugBio and the newest, uh, newest PugBio and Nanopore reads with Fly and get uh, good results. And finally, I wanted to give you some preview of our new algorithm. So we are working on extending Fly to metagenome assembly, which basically brings more extra challenges such as an even coverage distribution. And here's a uh, Metafly assembly of a mock metagenome uh, sequenced by uh, Promethion. Uh, and this data was recently published by uh, Nick Lomond's lab. So this data set contains eight bacteria and two yeasts. And as you can see, uh, Fly was able to assemble almost every bacteria into a complete chromosome. With one exception that two bacteria have a long unresolved repeats. And the yeast genomes also look good. And here's the same mix, uh, but with highly uneven coverage distribution. So it goes from 36,000 all the way to 0 0.0001. And obviously the species with uh, coverage below 2x were not assembled, but uh, if you have sufficient coverage as you can see, you are able to assemble complete or almost complete uh, bacteria or uh, yeast uh, with a good contiguity, and which 
with high landing coverage, with, which is an issue for uh, other assemblers. And uh, this is it. So I wanted to thank my co-authors for their great contribution. And Fly Assembler is available on GitHub. You also have Bioconda packages. And the manuscript uh, is online. So I welcome you to take a look and learn uh, more about Fly and try it out. Thank you.